Hello, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room channel. I'm going to demonstrate how to make a poncho with a collar on it like this. Now this one has a different look than this one. Even though they're almost made exactly the same way, there's just a slight little difference, but they're both easy to put on. On the bottom of the poncho is one inch wide fringe. You'd be surprised just how easy it is to make this fringe. Okay, let's get started. In a moment, I'll show you how to measure so that you know how much of the platitudes fabric to buy. But for making your collar, there's two different types of fabrics you can use. If you want to use the stretch knit collar, then you want to buy one quarter yard of a four-way stretch knit. And I'm using a jersey knit. And four-way stretch means it not only stretches this way, but it stretches this way also. The platitudes fabric collar takes a lot more fabric because you're going to be cutting it on the bias. So you will need one yard extra of the platitudes fabric. So that you know how much fabric to purchase, you'll all be different because you're all different heights. So I'm going to take this tape measure and I'm going to place the end up at my shoulder then I'm going to decide how far down I want the poncho to go. Do I want it to stop at my hips, go to my thighs, go to my knees? You, you need to decide. Then whatever that measurement is, let's say it's 20 inches, then double that, so that's 40 inches. Then add another two or three inches to that because there is some space up over your shoulder. So if you are really wide across your shoulder, then of course you want to add maybe uh, three inches. Most of you only need to do two inches. Here is a little yardage chart. So four and a half inches, every four and a half inches I should say, is one eighth of a yard. And so you go up, you double that nine inches, it's a quarter of a yard. Then 12 inches, a half, or excuse me, one third and so forth. It goes all the way down to one yard. Probably most of you are gonna be buying anywhere from one and a quarter yards to two yards of fabric. Now remember your fabric is folded, but we wanna measure from raw edge to raw edge. When you purchase your fabric, the selvage edges are folded together. So right now my selvage edges have been cut off and I've already done my fringe bottom. But pretend this is the selvages right here. And up here is your folded edge. Then you have two raw edges at each end. So what you want to do is we're going to refold it. We're going to take the selvage edges away from each other and then bring the raw edges together. So I've got my raw edges together down here. Okay, so this folded edge up here is your shoulder line. So that's where your shoulders is going to be. Now if you're using the platitudes fabric, which I hope you are because it's going to be real easy to do this particular project, you want to match up your plaid stripes. Line them up because this is really important. So you want to make sure it's all lined up and then if you need to cut anything because it's a little crooked make sure you do that. And then here are the selvages over here. Remember I refolded the fabric. So at each end there's a little bit of a selvage. It's very narrow. It's maybe slightly more than a quarter of an inch. You want to trim that off. So place a ruler and just trim it off at each end. So after you've done your first fold, you want to go up to the fold line and just press some of it in the center. This is going to help you place your little pattern a lot easier. So get a press folded edge here. Now you're going to bring the other two edges together. So fold it over this way to find center. And then press again up in here. And this is going to be your center point. So you're going to see those little pressed edges and you're going to know where to place your pattern because you have these little creases in there. 
so that you know exactly where your shoulder line is and where the center point is, place a pin on that folded edge that's going in the center. Then on each side of the center pin, put some pins on the other fold line. And these are used to help place your pattern piece. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to draw the pattern for your neckline. So you want to take a piece of paper. This is just an eight and a half by 11 inch piece of paper. Fold it in half like this. Line up your edges here. Then really press on that crease there. And then unfold it. Fold it the other way and really press on your crease, your folded place. Then right there where the two lines cross, here's the center fold and here's the other center fold going the other way. Now I'm going to show you where to put these little marks right here. So you're going to take a ruler. I love these square rulers because they're great for marking patterns. You want to divide, draw a line that's nine and a half inches long, but you want it centered. So the center of nine and a half inches is four and a, three quarters inches. So I'm going to put four and three quarters, and this is a nine and a half inch long ruler, but go from the first number zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and a half. So you want to draw a line there. And then if you want, you can draw another line here just to make it more noticeable for yourself. Now I'm going to show you where to draw these. So this one here, you're going to draw it right in the center. You're going to put your ruler, your two and one quarter inch line, right on your center line going this way. And you're going to put a mark up here. Then you're going to go over two and a half inches here and come to down to where you have your two inch line here and you're going to go over two and a half inches this way and put another mark. Now you're going to go over to the other side and do the same thing. So put your two and a half inches and your two inch and do another mark. So now you've got three marks up here. Now down here you're going to go three inches from the center line and put a mark. Now go over two and a half inches this way and two and a half inches down from the edge, put a mark and repeat over here. Go over uh, two and a half inches this way and two and a half inches this way and put a mark. So now you have kind of an oval shape of markings. All you're going to do is just connect them. Take your time. Use a pencil, okay, and just go around. You see you can always erase if you mess it up and then fix it. And then it's just an oval shape. And then finish connecting all the dots. Then you're going to go ahead and cut on your drawn line. Then you're going to have this outer piece of paper that you're not going to throw away just yet. Set this inner piece of paper aside. This is going to be your actual pattern. But take this outer piece and put it over your head to make sure it's going to easily fit over your head. If it's too big or too small, you can make those adjustments by just either coming in this way to make it smaller or go out this way to make it larger. This next step is real important. Mark on your pattern back, so this is the back of the neckline, and this is front. So the front is always slopes down more because we always need a little bit more in the front. So this is the side where you went down three inches. This is the side where you went up two and a quarter inches. So back, front, on this center seam, right shoulder. Unfold your fabric now, because you're going to place the pattern on it. So remember where I had you put all those pins. So you're going to take the center line here and place it right over the center line and line up this line across here with those pins at each side. 
So then you can either go ahead and pin your pattern down or you can put some little weights. I often use little weights to hold my pattern pieces down. And then go ahead and cut this oval shape hole out. So this is what it looks like after you've cut your fabric out. This is the fabric that I'm using for one of the ponchos. I'm going to show you two types of fabric you can use for your neck band collar. This is a stretch jersey knit like what you would have on a lot of t-shirts. I've cut it uh, 12 inches wide and 25 inches long. Your other option for a neckband collar is to use the same fabric that the poncho itself is made out of, which is the platitudes fabric. It's just an option. But when you cut it out, you have to cut it on the bias, going across this way. So here are your raw edges of your fabric. Here's the selvage edges. You're going to have to unfold your fabric and then cut it across this way. On your ruler, there is a line marked 45. And this is the line you want to use to place your ruler on. Now you can either just use chalk to draw your lines and then cut, or you can just use these acrylic rotary cutting rulers to do it. And you would place your line, this line here, the 45, on your selvage edges. And then you would draw, cut, do your cut. So you want to move it way over on your fabric because you're going to need to cut it 38 inches long this way. So you make sure you've got that 45 line on there. You're going to go way out into your fabric, do a cut. Then you're going to go over just 10 inches. You can do 12 inches like I did on the other one, but for this I only did 10 inches. So then you would go over 10 more inches and do your second cut. Now this is just a smaller piece to use as an example to uh, stitch the ends together. So you want to make sure that both ends are going in the same direction. You don't want them going out like this or in like this. So again, you're going to take that 45 line that's marked, put it on the edge here, and make sure both ends are trimmed like this. Now I'm going to show you how to bring your ends together. So because this jersey knit doesn't really have a front or back side, both sides look the same, just bring your two ends together. These are your ends that are 12 inches wide. Bring them together, pin, and then stitch a 1 quarter inch seam along this edge. On this one here, if you're using the platitudes fabric, you want to take these two ends, I'm moving this over, bring this end towards this end, and you're just going to turn it a little bit to put it like this. And you want to make sure that when you set it down, you have a quarter inch fabric sticking out here and a quarter inch fabric sticking out at the end. So you have these little tails. Then you're going to stitch right here with the two, two ends intersect and stitch down to there. Now you can take a ruler and draw a line to those two points that's going to be easier for you. Then go to your ironing board and no matter what uh, method you're using, press that seam open. Now fold the back side of the fabric, that's where the seam raw edge is. You're going to take those two sides and bring them together so that the neckband is folded like this. Now remember, you want to keep track of where your front and back is. This is my back, this is my front. You want to take where your neck band is folded with the little seam edges together here. That's going to go in the back at the center. So you would go ahead and begin pinning it down. So you want to go and take this neck band and pin it down all the way around. Now here's what it looks like when you have it pinned down. 
And you, you should use a lot of pins because you're working on a curve. It's real easy for this fabric to slip out of place. Now here's one with using the platitudes fabric. And again, you want to fold that neck band in half just like you did the other one and pin it on the inside. Now the uh, collar should stretch easily as you are pinning it down because it is cut on the bias. So no matter which one you did, you want to go ahead and do a one quarter inch seam all around the edge. When I was stitching the neck band on, I used an overcast stitch. All computerized sewing machines have at least one. If you're not sure which stitch that is, check your user's manual to see which one of your stitches. It's very easy to do. After you've stitched the collar or the neck band on, you're going to take this seam and fold it down towards the poncho. Then pull your neck band out of the way, okay, like this. So now your seam is going down that way, and you're going to top stitch about an eighth of an inch from the seam. You're going to go down this way and stitch on top of the platitudes fabric all the way around. Here's how this collar came out. Now it's a little stiffer, it stands up taller, it has a completely different look even though it's put on the same way. And the one with the stretch knit just sort of flops down. Here's how easy it is to make the fringe. You go to your raw edges starting in a corner, and this is all the way around the bottom of the poncho. And you might have to use a straight pin to get some of the threads to come out. But along the edge, you'll have little short pieces at first. So at first, it's going to be real easy. So you just kind of keep going along. Now, this is a short piece, so it's really easy on this short piece. But then you're going to get to where it's longer. And what I like to do is not pull more than two at a time. One is really easy. Two is a little bit more of a struggle. And you'll just see it unraveling. Now, I only did one inch wide fringe on mine. So I had a little ruler next to me and I would measure until I got up to an inch. Then I would go to the next side and do the same thing. Loosen the threads and begin pulling them out on the other side until it was one inch wide. So you go all the way around. Well, as you can see, the collars have different looks on each one. This one stands up, has a little bit more of a refined look, where this one is just your casual, everyday look. I actually like both of them a lot, and I'm, one of these I am gonna be wearing a lot. So you'll see how easy it is to make this poncho. Once you get past the collar, it's easy peasy. Now I do have other poncho patterns, so check below your YouTube screen for those video links. Go down to the description section, expand it open by clicking on the arrow, and scroll down some more and you will see the links to those videos. You'll also see links to other beginners sewing projects. Now don't forget to follow me on Instagram and check out my Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time and happy sewing. If you like the Sewing Room channel, one of the best ways to show your support is to subscribe by clicking on that red subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And make sure you click on the bell so you receive notifications for all my new videos. I'm Cheryl, this is Manny, and this is Scotty. See you next time.